Hey, it's Dr. Chart. I want to talk to you about one of the things I see with couples that allows them to be able to predict divorce, divorce and breakup, right? It is surprising to me how many people miss this. And I want to make sure that you don't miss this in your relationship or your marriage. By the way, my name is Dr. Aldewan Tart, Christian clinical psychologist. Let's dive in. All right. There's one way to predict a pending breakup, and it's right in front of most couples, but they don't see it until they're too late. And every marriage counselor, every clinical psychologist, every pastor, anyone that works with couples, they're like, how can people miss this? All right. And so I want to warn you about this so that you don't miss it so that you can have an amazing, not even a mediocre marriage, but an amazing marriage or relationship because you need to have successful relationships to build up to marriage, right? Let me ask y'all, let's see if y'all are smarter than a psychologist. What is the number one reason, family, that couples break up? Uh, I, I, I know y'all guessing, uh, money, uh, intimacy, in-laws, right? Arguing, not getting along, all, all of that is it, all right? But it is not the answer, all right? The number one reason why couples finally call it quits is something called failed bids for connection. Basically means you disconnect. Does that make sense? Now, all those things may lead to a disconnection. You know, all, all those things may lead to disconnection. All right. But when couples disconnect, when they feel like, OK, that's it. They've disconnected. I no longer feel you. I don't feel this relationship. I don't feel this marriage. I don't feel loved. I don't feel love for you. Right. When that happens, the relationship is dead. Now, you may decide to stay together and be kind of roommates and disconnect. And then some people actually physically disconnect. And I want to talk to you about how that happens. All right, so let's dive in. First is the absence of bids. Bids is like, bids, the definition is like, I'm trying to bid for your attention. I'm trying to do anything to get your attention. It could be, hey, babe, how was your day? Or it could be coming into the room with someone, right? But there are a lot of couples that just don't have bids, right? You're so busy working. See if you can relate, right? So busy working. There was a couple who they were dentist, all right? And they talked about coming in from work and then they would bill and then they would do admin stuff at night and they have their laptops open in the bed and they just didn't have any attention. There was neither one of them was bidding for attention. They were just coming in and ignoring their marriage. If you look at marriage, uh, like a mountain that you want to climb up and conquer and stick your flag at the top. You need oxygen to get up there. And the oxygen is the attention that you spend with one another, attention that you give one another. That's the oxygen. That's the currency of marriage. You know, in the world, there's this money, right? Uh, but it's also time, peace of mind, health. Anyway, that's a whole other video. But in marriage, it's about attention. Like love has to be a verb. All right. Number two, ignoring bids. All right. So there's some couples that they don't make any bids towards one another. They just kind of like uh, just uh, do a house together. They do kids together. They do wealth together, but they don't they don't do relationship. They don't date. They don't have anything scheduled. All right. Number two is ignoring bids. But one of you is like, look, we need a date. And the other person just ignores it. All right. We need quality time or we need to make love or we need to go uh, celebrate our anniversary or we need to do something, spend some time outside of work, kids, parents. Uh, our different hobbies and and one and someone ignores them right there's a cost of that and then there's, that usually leads to number three arguing about failed bids all right so someone is either as being ignored from their bids someone's gonna bring it up and like look i'm not happy i'm unhappy with this i, I would like this this is not working for me they may shut down or they may turn up or whatever it is um and there's an argument you know but what's interesting is this is like the phone company telling you, listen, you forgot to pay your bill and we're about to disconnect. They try to get your attention. And, and if you ignore it, well, you know what happens. But couples do this all the time. When, you're, when your partner is trying to get your attention, you need to respond. All right. And number four, this is when you turn away. So someone's like, look, you know, I tried to get your attention. Say to Dennis, one of them says, look, you look, we need to not have our laptops in the bed. And the other person keeps working and said, look, just then just report. I need to get this out. Hey, we have to make money. Or I put I didn't go to dental school to be broke. Whatever it is they say. All right. And that person tries to get the attention. Eventually, people get tired and they say, well, bump it. I'm just going to stop trying. And then they turn away from the marriage. They turn away from their spouse. Right. And so one of the things that we do uh, is my wife and I, we have a marriage retreat. It's just a resource 
uh, a weekend for love.com that helps couples actually go in the right direction. So make sure y'all check that out. It's actually happening this month, uh, uh, September 30th to October 2nd. All right, but let's talk about how to fix it. All right, number one, be intentional. Schedule time together as a couple. Make sure that your marriage works. Like, do you have date night scheduled so that your marriage actually has bids when y'all bid for each other? Do y'all have quality time at the end of the day? You know, my wife and I, we have after dinner tea. And now we have actually after dinner workouts where we're in the same workout room and we're spending quality time. That is that is scheduled. You know, couples have morning devotionals. Couples have walks that they take. Couples have after dinner tea, coffee, whatever it is, morning rituals. What do you have actually scheduled that is consistent as part of your culture? At, to keep you connected on a regular basis. Because, you know, culture will have you so distracted and so busy, you end up losing your whole relationship of marriage. All right. Number two, be responsive. Make perfect adjustments. All right. So when someone is coming to you and they're like, look, you know, and, and they're trying to get your don't ignore it. If you if you get a disconnection notice from your uh, cell phone company, pay it. If you ignore it, the, the, the phone company is going to shut off your phone. It's going to cause you to miss business. It's going to cause you embarrassment. It's going to cause you to get the reconnection fee. And it's going to cost you more because you're going to have to pay for, you know, whatever it is. Right. Why do all of that when you could have just responded to the warning? Right. You don't do that with your bills, but people do it in relationships all the time. And yet they're surprised as to why their spouse wants to break up and get a divorce. It says in the word James 417, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. That, that's your exercise. That's responding to your partner. That's building wealth. That's resting. You all get it. That is manifesting. That is, that is getting in your word. All those things. If you know you should do it and you don't do it, that's sin. It's going to be trouble for you. Right. So number three, you should fear regret. A lot of people don't fear regret. You don't fear breakup or divorce. You just let it happen. Right. What's the cost of not meeting your partner's needs? You know what the cost of divorce is? Half. Half of the time with the kids, half of the wealth that you built, half of half of whatever assets that you have. Right. It's going to cost you half. Wouldn't it be better just to pay your bill, respond to your partner, listen to what they're saying? Husbands, listen to your wives. Wives, listen to your husband. Boyfriends, partners, listen, girlfriend, listen to one another. When they say, I feel this way, don't say bump it, you know? Be a regret. Because here's the, here's the crazy thing. You're gonna, if you divorce and break up, you know, you're going to be lonely, you're going to sit at home, and then in the next relationship, you're actually going to give your partner what they need. Deion Sanders talked about that. Talked about that as like Shaq talked about that. Like, man, we were both wrong, right? If we would have just done what our spouse said, we'd still be in a happy marriage and be around our kids every day. And Dion does that in his current marriage. And then number four, be loving. Love is a verb. Be good at providing love. The main ingredient in a marriage, y'all, is love. It's love. And there are a lot of people who are great at business. They look good. They're fine. They're tall, dark, and handsome, tall, light, and handsome, whatever your flavor, mocha, whatever your flavor is, right? But they're bad at love. You know, I tell people all the time, they say, oh, man, I like him. I like her. I say, how good of a lover are they? They mean like sexually. I'm not talking about sexually. I'm asking, like, do they compromise? Do they apologize? Do they meet your needs when you say you have some needs? Do they respond? Do they anticipate your needs? Will they go to counseling without, you know, hesitation to say, yeah, let's work it out. I'm a great lover. I want to make sure that we're loving one another. How good are they? There are a lot of people just not good at loving, right? They want to argue all day. They want to be narcissistic. They want to be selfish. They'd rather for things get disconnected. You file for divorce, and then they want to act right after you've already disconnected. That's not going to happen, all right? So y'all get it. So the main message here is respond to your partner's needs real time. Matter of fact, if you can get to the highest level, y'all can schedule it so that you never have uh, a, a big uh, loss or gap of needs because we're already scheduled. Right. And for those of you that need marriage, uh, marriage classes, we do once a month just to keep you tuned up. Check out betterhusbandbetterwife.com. You know, just marriage classes once a month. All right. I think it's the second Thursday of every month, 9 p.m. Allocate the time, get into it, block it off so that your marriage can thrive, y'all. So listen, we can have better relationships if you respond to bids for attention. It's your partner trying to say, meet my needs before we break up. You're smarter than that. Don't get disconnected. Stay connected. Take care and God bless.